Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and the Vice President. Thank you all very much. I'm pleased to be seated. I'm delighted to welcome all of you here today. In a few minutes, it'll be my privilege to present the National Medal of Science to 19 Americans who have made outstanding contributions to our way of life and to our future. Recently, I was told that all those scientists don't want it generally known most enjoy their work so much that they almost feel guilty getting paid for it. <laughs> now, I was, I, uh, I was told this either by Jay Keyworth reminiscing about his previous job <laughs> or by Dave Stockman reminiscing about his present one. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but we're not here to take up a collection. In fact, despite the constraints in federal spending, our budget for the next fiscal year calls for a 6.7% increase for basic research in the physical sciences. I should add that we're also planning for increased funding for science and technology and basic research through the end of the decade. And that's because what you do is that important. The ultimate source of innovation, of new technology, of human progress itself is knowledge, and that's the business of science. Now, there's no nation on Earth that can match our scientific capabilities. But, of course, no nation depends as much as we do on the science base. Our enviable standard of living, our national security, our ability to create millions of new jobs, more than seven million over the last two years in what the Europeans are calling an American miracle, all depend on new talent, knowledge and our talent for making use of it. And there's no doubt that the measure of America's future safety, progress, and greatness depends on how well scientists keep pushing back new frontiers. That's why I'm so pleased that today's ceremony is the third White House event this month, honoring the people whose work will determine that future. Last week, we presented the first National Technology Awards for exceptional achievements in developing and using technology for industrial advances. Technology last week, Science this week. Isn't that just like the government getting the cart before the horse? <laughs> Jay Keyworth tells me that there have been times not too long ago when scientists and technologists barely spoke to each other. Well, I believe that one of today's real strengths is the enthusiasm with which scientists and technologists explore each other's interests. In fact, it occurs to me that if we could have brought together last week's doers, with today's thinkers in a single ceremony, we might have seen the formation of several new companies before the medals were even presented. Maybe we should keep that in mind for next year and invite a few venture capitalists. <laughs> yeah. But at least this year, today is the day for the National Medal of Science. And now I know Einstein once remarked that the whole of science is nothing more than a refinement of everyday thinking. Well, that was easy for him to say. As for me, I'm still trying to decide or decode energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. And I must tell you that when I looked over the briefing materials for this event and saw phrases like discovery of the free neutrino and the central role of neuropeptides and spectroscopic investigations, I thought they were mentioning some of the questions left over from Ed Meese's confirmation hearings. <laughs> but today's awards honor a remarkable group of American scientists. The National Medals of Science are a tribute from your fellow, uh, well, from your a group of a. Uh, why should I pause right here when it's right in front of me and all I have to do is look at it from your fellow scientists? 
I started to say just from your fellow Americans, but I think that would have been proper too, because I'm sure they share our gratitude and appreciation for all you do. Each of you has devoted the, your energies not to truth as understood, but to the search for truth not yet understood. You had faith that you'd come to understand the unknown, and you did. You had faith that your discoveries would bring progress, and they did. And because of your achievements and those of your colleagues, we stand on the verge of greater advances than mankind has ever known. Your work is proof that there are no limits to discovery and human progress when men and women are free to follow their dreams. You've proven time and again that freedom plus science equals opportunity and progress, and that America's future can be determined by our dreams and our visions. On behalf of the American people, in whose name these medals are presented, I extend my congratulations to all of you, to your families, and your co-workers. We deeply appreciate what you've done, and we thank you. And God bless you all, and now I'm going to ask Jay Keyworth to help me present the medals. Jay. I would like to read the citations. First, to Howard L. Backrack for his pioneering research in molecular virology. Paul Berg for fundamental contributions to understanding the mechanisms of gene expression. Margaret Burbage for Leadership in Observational Astronomy. Maurice Goldhaber for his many contributions to nuclear and particle physics. Herman H. Goldstein for his fundamental contributions to science and to numerical analysis. William R. Hewlett for his pioneering accomplishments in the creation and manufacturing of electronics. Roald Hoffman, for his creative applications of theory to organic and inorganic chemistry. Helmut Landsberg, in recognition of his outstanding contributions to climatology. And to George M. Lowe, and this award is awarded posthumously. Mrs. Lowe will be accepting for his outstanding contributions to the nation's manned space program. Walter H. Monk for his unique contributions to geophysical, geophysics and physical oceanography. George Pimentel for his study of chemical bonding and molecular dynamics and for his discovery of the chemically pumped laser. Frederick Rhinus for the experimental discovery of the free neutrino. Wendell L. Roloffs for his fundamental contributions to basic and applied biology. And Bruno B. Rossi for fundamental contributions to physics and astronomy. Bertha Scherer, for her pioneering contributions in establishing the concept of neurosecretion. J. Robert Schriefer, in recognition of his accomplishments in the area of condensed matter physics. and Isidore M. Singer for his inspired revival of differential geometry. And John G. Trump, awarded posthumously with his son John accepting, for his introduction of new methods for the beneficial application of ionizing radiation. And again, Z. Richard N. Zare, for his contributions to molecular spectroscopy, photochemistry, and chemical reaction dynamics.
think a group photograph would be in order. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes the formal part of our program, and please join us in the state dining room for a reception. What's that? Peel back two years. <laughs> These are the 82 medals. <laughs> so now we're two years younger than we did. Somebody is I can't understand that. Did they do a different one? We were just late. Oh, oh I see. We've <laughs> <laughs> become a country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. A lot of. <laughs> Natural phenomena with lag times. <laughs> well, well, listen, congratulations again to all of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Nice George, to see you all. Thank you. <laughs>